uh, to bring tears into your eyes. Oh my God, this is the man we're talking about today. Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton. Fred is spelled F-R-E-D. Hampton is H-A-M-P-T-O-N. And the class starts now. It will last 10 minutes. Fred Hampton was born Frederick Chairman Fred Allen Hampton Sr. And he was born on the 30th of August in 1948. My brother, my sister, he was born in Summit Argo in Illinois, right there in Chicago. My brother, my sister, his name was given to him at birth by his father. My brother, my sister, he named him Frederick Allen Hampton. And he was born in Summit Argo in Chicago, Illinois, my brother, my sister. In fact, he moved with his parents to another Chicago suburb known as Maywood at the age of 10. His parents had come all the way from Louisiana as part of the great migration of African Americans in the early 20th century out of the South. They both worked at the Argo Starch Company, my brother, my sister, a corn starch processor. As a youth, our hero for today, Hampton, was gifted both in the classroom and also on the field of sports. He was an athlete who ran his art out. He hoped to play center field in the New York Yankees as he was growing up, but it never came to pass. At 10 years old, he started hosting weekend breakfast for other children from the neighborhood cooking the meals himself in what could be described as a precursor to the Panthers free breakfast program. At the age of 10, he was cooking food for children in the neighborhood. In fact, he would take ingredients from his mother and food from his father's kitchen and go out there and cook and feed little children in the neighborhood known as Maywood, another suburb of Chicago. Later on the Black Panther movement, when it came into full swing, it started to also take this same thing to cook food for the children in the area. Oh, what a boy at the age of 10. <laughs> In high school, he led workouts protesting black students' inclusion and exclusion from the competition for homecoming queen and calling on officials to hire more black teachers and administrators. So whilst he was in school, this was what he did. He made sure that there were workouts. In fact, protestations or better still my brother my sister what we call simply demonstrations to walk out of class if they did not see more black teachers in the school and also the fact that black people were being alienated from some competitions in the school and also some activities in the school fred hampton even in high school was a militant in 1966 Fred Hampton turned 18. At that time, he started identifying with the Third World Socialist str struggles, as well as reading communist revolutionaries like Che Guevara and Ho Chi Minh, and of course Mao Zedong. Now, if you haven't read Mao Zedong, you must find Mao Zedong and read. If you haven't read Ho Chi Minh, you need to find that. And also Che Guevara, my brother, my sister. Shortly after, Fred Hampton urged not only peace in the Vietnam War, but also Vietnam's victory. He was a man who stood for black people and also stood for justice. In fact, he also joined hands with the NWACP. And he became one of the leaders of the NWACP. That is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. My brother, my sister, 
He became very active in it and he even assumed leadership position of his suburban branches right there inside. Hey! He was able to gather a community of about 27,000 and the FBI was always watching him. The power of eloquence. Oh, he had the power of oratory. He could speak and convince so many people even at that age. My brother, my sister, he was so knowledgeable. He even was able to gather lawyers to be able to fight for black liberties in Chicago and even beyond. He was the most powerful black man in Chicago. Fred Hampton. My brother, my sister, in 1966, he turned 20, 18. In 1968, he turned 20. He was accused of assaulting an ice cream truck driver. In fact, it was Christmas time. And black children in the area did not have anything for Christmas. He saw an ice cream truck coming. He stopped the ice cream truck, chased out the ice cream driver, and then he served the ice cream, which was worth about $71 at the time, to the little children in the area. All the black children in the area come for free ice cream, stolen ice cream. He was arrested by the police and sent to prison to save some time. My brother, my sister, it looked like he was the Robin Hood of the area. All the children loved him. They would all come to him, Uncle Fred, Uncle Fred, I want ice cream, man. I want ice cream, Uncle Fred. Uncle Fred, when are you going to give me ice cream? They would be head saying this to him anytime he walked on the street. He was the champion of the children. In 1969, he was 21 years old. Hampton now became the deputy chairman of the BPP Illinois chapter. My brother, my sister, that's the Black Panther Party. They say Black Panther, Black Panther. And we say Black Panther. They say Black Panther, Black Panther. That's how they say it in America. Say it after me, Black Panther, Black Panther Perry, Black Panther Perry, Black Panther Perry. This is the African History Club. <laughs> Yabo! Yabo! In 1970, our hero was 22 years old. In fact, 40 to 70 percent of Black Panthers were all women, and he became the hero. My brother, my sister, they gave him more posts. Over the next year, Hampton and his friends and associates achieved many successes in Chicago. That was the time that he brought about what was known as the Non-Aggression Pact. Hey, no aggression, no fighting, no street gangs. He was only using oratory and brilliance to be able to deal with the situation. My brother, my sister, that was what it was. See what happened now. Hey, Fred Hampton was targeted by the FBI. My brother, my sister, they named him as the most dangerous black man in America. He had the power to convince with his oratory. He was able to convince any crowd by just two sentences. He was able to deal with any crowd. My brother, my sister, black crowd. And they targeted him. They set people around him. They attempted to take his life. And now he had a bodyguard. A black bodyguard who was always with him. My brother, my sister. At the time he was dating a young woman who was pregnant for him and he would hide and go into the catholic church where there was a priest who loved him so much this priest was a catholic priest who would give him time to come and be there he was dating a young woman by name deborah johnson who later changed her name to equa injury my brother my sister hey she was pregnant my god have mercy see what happened now the fbi uh, led by Edgar Hoover, decided to take down this man's life because he was the most dangerous black man in America. What they said was that if black people kept listening to him, they will certainly start a revolution and this revolution would be dangerous to white people, the Hispanics, and the rest in America. But Fred Hampton included even white people who were poor in the society and included Hispanics who were poor in his agenda and they were fed for free by the black penna black penna perry black penna black penna perry black penna perry 
Hear this now. Fred Hampton became the most powerful black man in America. Very young, yet very powerful. He made speeches all over and he was able to gather several, several hundreds of thousands of people who were ready to listen to his wisdom. He was also a lawyer in the making. Oh my God. Yes, he became a lawyer. My God have mercy. Now the FBI was looking for him. He had a very good friend by name, Mark Clark. Mark Clark became his bodyguard and his confidant. My brother, my sister, see what happened now. They were able to bribe a black man very close to him. And this is Mark Clark on the left and on the right is Fred Hampton, as we see right here in this photograph. They bribed one of the Black Panther members to get so close to Fred Hampton. And then this was what happened. On the 9th of November 13, 1969, when our hero, Fred Hampton, my brother, my sister, was only 21 years old, they drugged him. They put medicine in his food. And when he drank the tea, he fell asleep immediately. And then the Black Panther came in there, in his apartment, my brother, my sister, and opened fire. They shot at him over 100 times. Over 100 times, my brother, my sister. And Fred Hampton was killed in his sleep. Mark was also shot fatally. He died. His wife was also, in fact, his woman was with him, Deborah. When he was shot, she did not die, but she saw the atrocities. Her man was shot and killed. Mark was also shot and killed on the day by the FBI. Later, it was ruled as uh, um, um, important homicide. Important homicide. My brother, my sister, they have the legal term for that. They raided and killed him, my brother, my sister. But nothing happened to those who killed him. Investigations went into it. And they said that it was uh, important killing. They had to kill him. Necessary homicide. They had to kill him or else he was about to take over the black populace in America. And they were ready to vent their spleen on white people in America. My brother, my sister. Ten days after the murder of this man, Bobby Rush, the then Deputy Minister of Defense for the Illinois Black Panther Party, called the raiding party an execution squad. My brother, my sister, as is typical in settlements, the three government defenders did not acknowledge claims of responsibility for the plaintiff's allegations. Brother, my sister, he was shot and killed. They killed him. They executed him after drugging him and making him fall asleep. To them, it was important homicide. They took his life. Today, we remember this man. There are statues of him. People have made music about him in popular culture. The American rock band known as Rage Against Machine referred Hampton in a 1996 song known as Down Rodeo. My brother, my sister. Also in a song Murder to Excellence American rapper and entrepreneur Jay-Z also sang about him. Stephen King refers to Hampton in his novel 1122 63, my brother, my sister, which was written and published in 2012. My brother, my sister. Jeffrey Haas also wrote an account of Hampton's death, the assassination of Fred Hampton. How the FBI and the Chicago police murdered a Black Panther. And this came out in 2009. Today we remember the man. 
Today we remember this great black man. In fact, he was a man very powerful in the world of black people. The FBI took his life. Nothing ever happened. In fact, he was a Catholic. Or better still, he had sympathies for the Catholic Church. Or better still, for Catholicism. What is known as the black Catholic. My brother, my sister, today we remember this man. Today we remember the man who was shot in front of his woman. In what they refer to as justifiable homicide. Today we remember you, Papa. Ow. Papa. Uninyaminko. Papa Uninyaminko. Fred Hampton. My producer is going to post photos of the dead body of Fred Hampton. When the bullets hit him, he died in his sleep. He didn't even know what was happening. He was drugged. My brother, my sister, the most powerful black man at the time, they shot and killed him. Papa Uninyaminko. Papa Uninyaminko. Papa, bye bye. Papa Uninyaminko. Fred Hampton. You laid down your life for black people. You started a powerful movement. At the age of 10, you fed little children from your mother's kitchen. By the age of 18, you were already a full-blown Black Panther activist. This was when he was laid in state after he was murdered. He died. He was murdered in his sleep. Today we remember you, Papa. Hundred bullets were shot at him. Not even the story of Amadou Diallo and the over 41 bullets that hit him. My brother, my sister, this is the squad that shot and killed him. And here they are full of smiles that America's most dangerous black man had come down. Today we remember you. In the burden of knowledge, I ask you, now that you know what you do do, be an any or lay a mini of our fair Zudakagane me Zaka Yini. Yeah, Papango Bokaya Nunfifia Yanukai na wo Banayan Webe then Lele and Jiman Singa Be Kunne. It's been the story of Fred Hampton. Papa Mula Homeo.